friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Hello, friends, welcome to Coding That's Garden with CJ. That's me. Why is that playing? I need to stop that. That's me. Why is that playing? I need to stop that. Stop. 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 Oh, okay. That's why. I was wondering. That was almost real time. Okay. I'm streaming on only Twitch today. And, um, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Hello. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> I'm using this fancy new stream puppy thing. Check this out. Wow. Click of a button. Um, so today I'm going to be building a drop game, um, which is essentially going to be a, a Twitch overlay game. And this comes from uh, and was built by Instafluff. So um, if you've ever tuned into Instafluff, you might have seen the penguin drop game. And um, so I'll show it real quick, a quick preview of that. Yeah, there's me too. <laughs> this Twitch only thing is weird. I, I usually stream on YouTube. Okay. Um, but if you've ever seen on his, his uh, live stream, uh, you can type drop in the chat and then the... A little droppy thingy will come down, and if you land on the target, you get a high score. So we're essentially going to build that. Um, his code is totally open source and on GitHub. And in my last stream, I tried to modify this a little bit, but I've decided I'm just going to build it from scratch. Um, and that'll be fun. It'll be fun to build it with totally vanilla JavaScript. So we're going to give that a try. And I have a, um, a to-do list of all the things we need to do. And we're going to do it. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Let's say hello to everyone. Um, Hello, Lub Dub, who's excited to catch this live? Welcome. Yes, uh, welcome, Spacey, to this Twitch thing. <laughs> uh, yep, so drop is disabled right now because we're going to build a new one, and I'm going to try to do it pretty fast. So honestly, if you didn't know, the new the Popeye's chicken sandwich is back. So I need to finish this stream so I can go, go get a Popeye's chicken sandwich. So we got to do this. I'm, I'm not going to stream for more than an hour and a half. But yeah, <laughs> and yes, Instafluff has such an amazing, wholesome community. If you have not tuned into the Instafluff stream, you absolutely should. Um, it's super fun and super awesome. Um, and the other thing is this uh, stream puppy thing, which is really cool. So Instaf this is Instafluff's company, and it's a um, an app for controlling OBS and uh, managing your Twitch stream while you're live. Um, and so I'm using that right now. It's really cool. Watch this. Oh. <laughs> So that was an image that was created by uh, she.mo um, on the last live stream. And, uh, but with the click of a button, I can enable and disable uh, a, a source inside of OBS, which is pretty sweet. Uh, make sure I get the biscuits too. I'm, I might. Eat it on stream? No, I have, to, uh, I have to go drive to get it. I don't want to get it delivered because I want it to be hot and fresh. I haven't, I haven't tried it. I didn't get to try it the last time it was here. Um, and I'm not going to use p5.js. The plan is to do it uh, totally from scratch with vanilla JavaScript. And um, I showed this last stream, this DVD logo screen thing that I built. Um, this was built with vanilla JavaScript, and it's a similar idea. You have the little droppy thing, and when it hits the corner, it bounces off of it. So we're going we're gonna to use some similar code. We're still going to do it from scratch, but we're going to use similar code. But okay, so I have myself a parachute image, so that's good. And I have myself a uh, a target. We could probably find a better target. I don't know if anyone out there can maybe find a better target image, but this is the one that we're going to use. Um, I found it like on like a free PNG website, and it had some weird stuff on it. I put it into a photo editor just to get it to look decent. But if you have any suggestions or you have a better one, feel free to throw it in the chat. Stream from Popeyes. <laughs> I've never done a mobile stream. I could do that. Um, cool. So here's the plan. We're going to set up the client, uh, and we're just going to get the target on the screen at the bottom of the screen, make sure that that's working. Um, then we'll get like a drop image with this parachute. And um, one thing I'm going to do is, by default, if you type drop and you don't put an emote or put an image URL, it's going to use your avatar image. So it'll be nice to see all the little people's faces dropping on the screen. Hello, Buzz Review. Welcome. Thanks for the follow. Um, so that's the idea there. And so we're going to get it. We're going to use CSS animations to make the uh, parachute sway back and forth. And then uh, we'll get going. So the game, lo uh, game logic. Um, the drop will start out at some random x above the screen. And it will have some random x velocity and y velocity. So it could be in this direction. It could be in this direction. It could be in this. And it'll be totally random. And it'll just start going. And then when it hits, we're going to detect when it hits the edge of the screen. And when it does, we're going to bounce off in the negative uh, x velocity. And we're going to keep going and then detect when it hits the bottom of the screen and it's all going to stop. That's the plan. Um, and the other idea with this is we can make this totally usable by other people as well. So we're going to build this as a client server application. So the front end, 
Uh, right now, we're going to build it without integrating Twitch chat. It's just going to be super simple. But then we'll set up a backend server that will listen for Twitch chats and then emit socket events to the client. But what that will allow us to do is deploy this thing and then anybody can add it to their channel. So um, we'll essentially uh, be able to generate a unique uh, URL for the user's channel. And then they can put that URL in their OBS and they have their own drop game. Um, and then a stretch is to have like a leaderboard and, uh, and and generating the unique links. Initially, we're just gonna get it working with my channel, but that's that's the end goal. Let's catch up. <laughs> Imagine leaving your house for food in 2019. Uh, hello, Chris, welcome. Hello, Web No Sticks, welcome. Welcome, Buzz Review, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Uh, get some Steam cards, cool. Um, yeah, and so if you tuned into the 15-hour live stream I did on Saturday, uh, we played Drawful, which was super fun. So it'd be cool to find um, some games to play with the community uh, and have like a game night or something like that. Yeah, Minecraft, Rocket League, all that good stuff. Yeah, happy birthday, Buzz Review. All right, let's get started. So right now, we have nothing. So we need to, we need to write some code. <laughs> um, I'm going to make a client directory and a server directory because they're going to be separate. Uh, so let's make a directory called client. And I'm going to move that images directory into the client directory because um, that's where all the client stuff is going to go. And for now, we're going to do all our coding in the client directory. So let's make an index.html file. Um, and let's see. So if we go in here, we have an index.html file. Very good. And let's generate an HTML document. Very good. <laughs> the title will be drop game. And... Um, that's about it. <laughs> so we set up the client. Step number one, get the target on the screen. But let's catch up. Uh, Buzz Review says it, it escaped the backslash. When did it do that? Maybe right there? Yeah, but this thing has all kinds of escaping and parsing. Thanks for the follow, Zeons. Hello, low son. I'm doing pretty good. This is going to be, I'm going to try to make this one of the shortest streams ever. We're going to make this game and it's just going to be done. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> Uh, what am I drinking? Hello, uh, Spire AOC, by the way. I'm drinking water. Got some water. And that's a good reminder to drink. And hello, Terminal Bash. Welcome. I put your stickers in the mail today, so be expecting those in a few days. And Alka, put your stickers in the mail, too. Oh, when you said thanks, I see. Hello, Alka. Ta-ta. <laughs> okay, so we got the client. Uh, now we want to take this target image. Wait. Oh, it's not there anymore because I put it inside of the client directory. So if we go in here and we look at target, I want to put this image on the page. So uh, thank you, Dragomir. Yeah, remind me every, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. <laughs> Stay hydrated. Um, okay, so we want an image and its source is going to be uh, images slash target.png. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to start up light server in this directory. So light server is just a static file server, auto refreshing hot server. Um, auto refreshing dev server. There we go. We have the target on the page, uh, but I want it to be all the way at the bottom and probably I want it to be a little bit cut off. So I want it to um, be at the bottom of the screen about right there. We'll see how it looks. So let's do this. Let's get some styles going. I'm gonna create a link styles.css. And then in the client directory, we'll create those styles.css. Yes, Alka is here. <laughs> um, wait, what just happened? New file styles.css. Um, and I'm going to give it a class of target and let's say its position is uh, absolute absolute and it will have bottom of um, zero pixels can I do negative pixels what if I did like a negative hundred pixels would it go below the screen let's see so I, gave, I have this class, let's put it on the image. Let's say uh, class equals target. Uh, do fixed, not absolute, okay. So let's do position fixed, fix it. There we go, it's at the bottom of the screen. And yeah, it's a little bit chopped off. So let's do this. Let's say um, uh, negative 250. That's too much, <laughs> negative 200. That's pretty decent. I think, I mean, should I make it so the red dot is just like barely appearing? Let's let's see what that looks like. Like 230, 240, 
I do like 235. Actually, that's not bad. What do you all think of this? I'm gonna center it, but that this will be the target that's displayed for, for us to for you to land on. Um <laughs> a web app that an HTML file without 40 commits. Yeah, it's gonna be super basic. We're gonna have like three files. <laughs> Blasphemous. <laughs> uh, for the score, you can make the high score be zero. Then for the rest, you could just calculate the absolute value of the distance from the center of the target. That's the plan. It's it should be so easy. Uh, here we go. Alka has it. So left 50 percent. Translate x. Uh, uh, transform. Negative 50 percent. That's awesome. So here's exactly what this does. So left. If we if we only did left 50 percent. It doesn't take into account the width. See, it does that. But Alka's got this transform for us, which does negative 50% of the element itself, which should get it exactly centered on the page. I really like that. Thank you, Alka. So translate x negative 50%. What did I do wrong? Uh, left, 50%. Transform, oh, translate. <laughs> translate? Translate x. Here we go. Perfect center. Beautiful. Uh, emotes in the chat for Alka. Thank you. <laughs> uh, maybe a little more room on the bottom. Yes. We're gonna do total DOM uh, manipulation. You gotta go to your dentist appointment. Web uh, web, web no sticks. Uh, GitHub Actions has incredibly weak documentation. That's unfortunate. I haven't used it. Um, let's see. I'm happy. I'm very happy right now and very positive. <laughs> 2.30. Oh, I get it. 2.30. Ha. Uh, okay, yeah. So uh, do people think that I should raise the target up just a little bit? Just a little bit? But um, regardless, that looks... We're halfway there. <laughs> We're halfway there. <laughs> uh, sort of. I don't know. We got, we got, we got a ways to go. Uh, hey, what's up, Bob Paradox? Welcome. Okay, so uh, maybe like 5 or 10 pixels up more. Let's try it. So, uh, 235. Oh, what if we showed the whole red dot? Let's see what that looks like. Like 230? 227. 220. What do we think of that? I'll leave it there for now. Um, but we, cause we can always adjust it later. So great. We got the, the target on the screen at the bottom and on the center. Uh, get the drop image on the screen with the swaying animation. Um, so leave it as is. It looks better. Look good. Yep. Um, two. So do it as. Let's let's see. I, I the thing is I don't want to nitpick it because we can always make it better. Um, so we do two thirty and then uh, scale y. Like go up or down. 1.2, like that. Crop the image so I don't have to position it like that. Eh. Eh. Uh, Brandon says, was so impressed by your stream Saturday, but was, wasn't able to watch it all. Is it going to make it to YouTube? Yeah, so um, YouTube chopped it to 12 hours. So I tried to re-upload it as 15 hours, but it's still processing. So I may just enable the 12 hour one and then upload the last three hours of the stream. But yeah, it'll be there soon. I don't think I'm gonna crop it. Um, am I going to be using the developer rig? Uh, no, 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 no. Down, oh, scale it down, okay. 0 0.9. Oh, that looks like, that almost did a little, little like a, it made it look like it did that. I like this, this is good. Um, I saw someone the other day with the license 23 pair, and I was thinking for so long about its meaning, only to realize it meant two, three, pair. Dentist. I, I don't get it. Uh, okay, so, easy enough. Um, let's get the little drop image on the page. So, um, here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna write the HTML, like, in the HTML document. Oh, tooth repair, I see. Two, three pair. <laughs> Um, so we're gonna write the HTML in the doc in in the document itself, but uh, once we get it nice and looking good, then we're gonna use JavaScript to like dynamically add it and all that good stuff. So we'll have the div. This will have like a class of drop, and then we need an image, and its source will be images slash parachute. Um, let's see what we get. 
it's huge. So we're gonna we're definitely gonna scale it down. And what I'm thinking is I mentioned it like by default, um, just show the user's avatar. So let's let's show my avatar, not YouTube, Twitch, um, like this. Copy image address. Uh, yeah, so drop is disabled while we build a new one. I mean, technically I could enable it, but yeah, we're, we're going to get this working. We're going to get this working very soon. That's that's the plan. Um, yeah, so if I do that, then we should see my little image there. Cool. Um, could I shoot particles when someone gets above 125? Yeah, and and I think what I'll do is like maximum score is 100. That'll, the, the, that'll make the math probably easier. So like if you make a perfect bullseye, that's 100, and then less than if you're further away from it. Um, okay, so here's the plan. We're going to scale down the parachute. We're going to center this so it appears right at the little strings of the parachute. Um, and also for now, we're going to give the body like a background color. So let's just say uh, body has margin zero and padding zero. Um, and background of three, three, three. Yeah. So we should, so that, yeah, that, that makes it so that we can actually see the parachute. Very good. Um, okay. Now let's start styling this drop. So we'll say the drop, um, Maybe I think we'll uh, we'll give it a fixed width and height, and then scale everything with an, inside of it. So let's say um, width is um, seventy five pixels. I don't know, and um, we'll figure out what the height is. But then we can say drop, and then the um, did we give it a class? So the parachute. Let's give this a class of shoot. The shoot inside of the drop um, should have a width of one hundred percent. Um, look at that. Uh, but let's, let's bump it up. Let's say it's a hundred pixels more one fitty. That's pretty decent. Um, and then we can say the avatar is, uh, centered. Yep. I have a mechanical keyboard. If you do exclamation mark keyboard, you can see the link to it. Um, class equals, um, what do we call this avatar? The thing is this image could either be an emote or their user's avatar or um, other things as well. We'll call it avatar because sometimes your emote is your avatar. <laughs> and so we'll say drop avatar. Um, I think we could just do margin zero auto, right? That should center it. No. Oh, uh, display block. And then um, we want it to be on top of the, the strings a little bit. Um, so we'll do that, but let me catch up because I think I missed some things. Um, ne oh, that's, that's some side chatter, that's okay. Add a new game mode. Yeah, and I'll, I'll upload this to YouTube for sure whenever it's done. Hello, Carolinda, welcome. Thank you, Ice Cream Coats. <laughs> Is the T key still malfunction? It might be. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, sometimes it like triple, triple, triple types. Uh, good morning, Ballamin. Welcome. Okay. Um, what do you all think? So if I want to take this image and uh, push it up a little bit, and actually let's, let's, are, are emotes on Twitch all squares? Beautiful. That's the one, Spacey. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'll save that for later, but that's 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 how we get the score. Easy enough. Um, uh, border radius on the image? Yes, but here's the thing. It could be an emote. So, um, yeah, maybe for avatar, we do, let's say, like, width, 50 pixels, height, 50 pixels, and uh, border radius, 50%. Um, we can make it a little bigger. So let's do like 60. It's probably good enough. Um, and then we want to push it up a little bit. They're not all squares. Okay, so I think what we'll do is when we get emotes going, we'll have a separate class for emote, um, which won't give it border radius. Thank you, ATD. 
Hello, um, heck, welcome. I prefer using a square div with a background for the emote set to contain and centered. Ah, I love it. So let's actually do that. So if we create a div, um, and then this class is, uh, let's call it user image, and then that has the image inside of it. But like we said, this image could potentially not be a square. Um, and then if it is an avatar, we'd give it a border radius. But uh, the user image class will do what we said with uh, Alka here. So the user image will be a square. So dot drop uh, dot user image, and that is where we're going to do this stuff. And then um, here we can say width 100% height auto. Yeah, still works. Um, let's draw a little outline around it so we can actually see. Let's say like outline um, two pixels solid red. And so if we throw an emote in there, let me let me get an emote. Um, and hello, Annaboth, welcome. Um, so the thing is, I don't have my chat manager running. I wanted to just make it super simple today. Like, we can see the chat on the right-hand side. But let's do this. Let's get this, this emote. So um, if we throw an emote in there, Hello, Slam Jackson. Welcome. Are we doing 15 hours today? No. I'm gonna, I am gonna. mentioned I'm going to try to do no more than an hour, probably like an hour and a half, uh, mainly because I need to go to Popeye's to get the new chicken sandwich. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, that works. Um, so if we give it a negative top margin, will that actually move it up? I'm not, I'm not actually certain if that would, but let's say uh, margin top negative 10 pixels. Yeah, beautiful. Let's do like 20, negative 20. Because then it looks like it's actually um, attached. I need to go to Popeyes. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's actually attached to the uh, the, the the parachute. Um, would this kind of app be considered a Twitch extension? I don't think so because people would have to use it as a uh, an OBS overlay. Yeah, it's just an overlay. Um, cool. So. Um, and actually, people uh, send me send me some emote URLs in the chat so I can like copy and paste those, and we'll we'll choose some random ones. Uh, but don't do the emote. Find the actual image URL and and send a chat with that image URL. Bob says it's going to be impossible to get that sandwich. I'm in my little town. The Popeyes are overflowing. We got sheriffs directing traffic. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean. I'm I'm willing to drive to multiple Popeyes if I need to. You're you're you just you you've just made it, Andrew. Welcome, welcome, Andrew. Um, okay, so that looks good. Say image um, source equals that. Oh, it's teeny tiny. Okay, so this is where I need to do uh, potentially. Oh, like size three. Ah, uh, oh, I guess I did size two. Okay, I can do size two. I'll I'll default to size two. Uh, yep, I'm going to do katas on Wednesday. So that, uh, that's the plan. And thank you, Slam Jackson. Let's try this one. SRC is that. And yeah, I think if we default to size two, it seems to work. That's pretty great. Bucket. <laughs> um, let's just copy that one there. And uh, hello, uh, Merit Chan. Is that Merit Chan or is that someone new? Merit Kane Kins? Is it Merit Chan? Hello, <laughs> if it is. Just don't forget the biscuits. And hello, Jack Skelly, welcome. <laughs> uh, size two is 56 by 56. That's good to know. I mean, we can just standardize on 56 by 56. One thing I want to allow is uh, user submitted URLs as well. So when that happens, we'll default it to a width of uh, 56. So let's do this. Um, straight up and that should do it ish 56 ish oh <laughs> can't do that um and thank you murdoch cool there's another one all right i think i think that's all pretty much all i need 
Costco food court. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, for some reason, it doesn't look like the same name you have on YouTube, even though I, I know it is, Merchan, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have all of these. Um, let's do this. Um... <laughs> Image source equals that. Cool. And we'll try uh, one at a time. And actually, yeah, I've never been to the Costco food court. Bucket, very good. <laughs> um, I'm going to kind of comment these like one at a time. There's got to be a better way, but regardless. There's the Alka. Wait, do I already have the Alka somewhere? Yeah, I already have the Alka. There we go. Though, uh, I think that's okay. That one's okay. Um, cool. Okay, so here's actually... I, I, wanted, I want a bunch of these. <laughs> Let's do this. Um, like that. So here's what we're going to do. Copy each of these. We're gonna go to the beginning. We're gonna do a new line. We're gonna paste this here. We're gonna go to the new line, new line, and then closing div there and closing div there. Did I break something? Hey, we got a bunch of drops. Sweet. <laughs> um, and let's let's format this thing. Extension prettier VS Code is configured as the formatter, but not available. Uh, let's just use Beautify. It's fine. Format. Cool. All right, so we got a bunch of sample drops. That's awesome. Um. Oh, Spacey Cat says, "What is Popeye? As an Australian boy, I've never heard of this before." Um. No, it's a. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um. Yeah, it's a chicken chicken restaurant <laughs> with good biscuits. Uh, it's Louisiana style chicken. Um, uh, Merchan, yeah. So I'm I'm reserving the avatar class uh, for for user avatars, uh, like like my image right there. But um, emotes will not have that. Um, okay, let's give a just so we can see them all on the same line. Let's say the drop has a display of uh, inline block. Oh, I messed something up. I'm missing the closing. <laughs> I, I, I accidentally put extra closings here, I think. Yeah. These actually need to go right about here. Yeah, there we go. Yay. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, nice. So um, now that we have that... Uh, we want a swaying animation. So um, what we could do is put the animation on the drop element um, that just uh, does a uh, transform rotate back and forth. Um, I don't know how CSS um, animations work. Thanks for the follow, Zero Turner. Um, CSS animation. I think we want like keyframe animations. CSS keyframes. Yeah, something like this. So uh, you give it an animation name, how long it should take. Infinite is probably what we want because we want it to sway back and forth over and over and over again. Um, you tell it what you want it at the beginning of the animation and the end. This, this is exactly, this is what we need. Got to do those keyframes. OK, so um, we're going to name this way <laughs> and at zero percent we'll have a uh, transform of rotate degrees is this how do you do degrees um negative 10 degrees is that right 10 degrees and then on the element itself we can say animation sway Five seconds, infinite. Whoa! <laughs> uh, 
Um, when you say biscuit, I have a feeling you don't mean cookies. Nope. In the U.S., we call um, it's bread. It's like baked bread. <laughs> what do you call that in uh, like the U.K. or in Australia? And oh, th Chad with the C on Twitch. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for the follow. Um, you probably want that as a separate class. So you can stop the sway when it lands. Um, we could do that. Okay, so add alternate to the alt al animation. So instead of inf infinite alternate, so that way it goes back and forth. And I want it to be way faster. Let's do like one second. Actually, um, here, if, if we, if we give the element itself, a um a rotate of 10 degrees then when it goes back it will um oh never mind <laughs> that didn't work yeah what, what do y'all think of this should i do should i do more degrees it's like scones but without sugar okay scones okay look at easing and bezier thingies uh can't you do um um, like linear or like a ease in out is that valid yeah what do y'all think do we need more degrees spacey is saying 100 i think 100 will like flip it on its side but let's see yeah that's too much <laughs> um the timing should be linear instead of ease in out. Hello, Angel, welcome. <laughs> uh, we're creating this drop game. Perfection? Wait, with the hundred? Let me know, what degree should it be? Ease in out, 10 degrees was perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go back. Going back. This is it, 10 degrees. Yeah, that's all we, it's, it's a little floaty thingy. Little floaty thingy. Um, is that an emote, Danny? One turn? I don't have a better Twitch TV or the the Franker thingy <laughs> on on here. Tin and nonlinear? <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a CSS value. One turn. Hello, Zero Turner. Hello, Samurai Sean. Welcome. Okay, so we've got um it, it's animating. Great. <laughs> Let's look at our to-do list. So um Get the drop image animating on the screen with the swaying animation. Beautiful. Done. Um, next up, game logic. So uh, the drops start out above the screen at a random X, and then it has a random X and Y velocity. So we'll create like a game loop or something like that. So here's what we need. I'm gonna create a app.js. And um, uh, what do we do? <laughs> we, I guess we'll have a function that creates creates these little droppy thingies. So uh, let's let's say we have uh, this. We have a function called create drop that will take in the URL and then um, like return an element that is this. Um, so we can do something like. Uh, div equals document dot create element. So we're going to create a div. And then we're going to um, say div dot inner HTML is going to be equal to this, but without the wrapping. Like that. Um, but we'll give the div the class name of drop. And then we're going to take in the URL, so the URL goes right about here. Yep. Um, and then maybe we'll ha we'll pass in a, a boolean like is avatar. Um, it, that by defaults to false, but if it's true, we're going to add the class uh, avatar. So right here we'll say uh, is avatar. Then we'll add the class avatar. Otherwise, don't add the class avatar. 
Uh, I deleted the ease in out. I think you gotta have that smooth motion. So I should do ease in out. Let's do that. I should add FFC and BTDV. Yeah. Um, it's on my it's on my to do. And hello, Oaken Shield. Welcome. The shoot could be a pseudo element. You're making things too complicated, Alka. I mean, we could, <laughs> but um, not right now. Uh, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah, let's let's do ease in out. Oh, it is ease in out. Oh, it's still there. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, so we have this nice little function. It creates an element and then returns that element um, that where you can pass in a URL. So that's wonderful. Um, what else should we do? So let's say we have uh, an array of drops. And then any time a new drop happens, we'll push it into this array. Um, so, and actually, when we create a drop, well, that'll, cre we'll say create drop element. We can use this function, create drop element. Um, and then we'll have a function that's like do drop. <laughs> so that will take in, um, I guess, the URL. And um, so we'll say drop equals uh, create drop element with the URL. And I guess we kind of need to know if it is an avatar or not. And again, we'll default that to false and pass in is avatar. So we have the element. Um, then we need some initial state. So if we look at our to-do, um, it starts out above the screen at a random x and it has a random x and y velocity. So what I'm thinking is every drop will have like an object that has the, its current velocity and its current x and y position. Nice. Um, <laughs> or see you later, Carolinda. Um, oh wait, are you saying, are you doing, you're at the gym and you're watching? Okay. When is this game gonna drop? Soon, Danny, soon. You have no easy way to remove the animation when the target lands to you since it's on the drop class. Oh no, we can just say um, drop dot class list dot uh, remove. Um, or we could add a new class that overwrites the animation. So we could add a new class in here that's called like landed and its animation will uh, not have sway. It'll be like animation none. We can do that. Lots of uh, do jobs in the coding gardens. Hello, code phobia. Welcome. <laughs> okay, so we create we created a drop. Um, let's say like so we have this array of drops. Let's say like drops dot push, and actually let's call this element. And so we're gonna push an object that has the element. It has the uh, location, which starts off at a random x. So it's a random x between. Um, this part of the screen and that part of the screen. So let's say uh, window dot inner width times math dot random. That should give us a random x between zero and the width of the window, right? And then the y starts off at a negative um, height. And actually we should see how, how tall are these things? They should all be fairly the same height, I think. We look at the drop element. Oh, the height changes. <laughs> Let's let, we'll do 200 pixels to be safe. So they start off at a negative 200 pixels. Um, so when the drop gets added to the game, it's at some random x, and it's above the screen at negative 200. Um, and then it's also going to have a random velocity, and that's what's going to make it like fly off onto the screen. So we'll say velocity. And this will be a random x velocity. So let's just say um, math.random. Um, but we, we want it. So the x velocity is going to be is going to make it go in this direction. Um, so if we have a random y velocity as well, this creates a slope. So it's kind of like it could be like this or it could be like that. Um, but this is always going to be positive. So let's multiply it times negative 1 sometimes. So we'll say um, math.random is greater than 0 0.5, then we'll multiply it by uh, negative 1. Otherwise, we'll just multiply it by 1. And same thing with, well, no, y velocity always needs to be positive. If it was, if it was a negative y velocity, it would never be shown on the screen. So 
That should do it. Um, the Y velocity is fixed in the original. I want it to be random. Like, some are going to... No, no I, I would say no, because some of them fall, like, really slow, and some of them, like, hit the corners like that. Math.random minus 0 0.5 times 2 dot max. And thanks for the follow, uh, Big Molten. Welcome to the stream. Um, I'm going to go with this, but if this breaks, remind me, Spacey Cat, and I'll try to use that. So um, we, we create an element. We put it into the array. That should be it. Now, now we need just need a game loop. So we have a game loop. And this we'll call um, update, which payment request update event? What is that? <laughs> uh, so we'll call update, and then we'll call draw. So the update, um, well, we could draw and then update. What, what is your all's experience? Should we draw first or update first? I don't know if it really matters, but let me know. Must add credit card number to the drop. <laughs> yes, to play. Update, then draw. Okay, that, that was my initial initial thought. But basically, update will change the x, y location on this object here based on the current velocity. It'll change it to the next value. It'll in increase its x or y, y rotation, um, uh, location. And then um, we'll just do it over and over again. But for now, we'll just call it once. And so we need an update function. And update um, will update the x and y values on this element thingy. So we're going to iterate over all of the drops. Yeah, everybody vote. You should vote. <laughs> um, OK, so we have each drop. And, um, and I guess one thing we probably should have done is add the element to the page right here. So when we do the drop, we're going to say like uh, document dot body dot um, a pin child. So we do the drop, we add it to the page. Um, one thing we could do though is before we append it, we can set its initial x and y values. So we can say like uh, element dot style dot um, top is going to be um, this stuff. So let's put it in a variable. So element.top equals drop.location.y pixels. And the left is going to be drop.location.x plus the width divided by the two. <laughs> yeah, there are a ton of mods. Uh, should I give the drops an ID so you can delete and reference them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess right now we can just do like date.now plus math.random. Eventually, we'll have the Twitch user ID, and that'll be the unique ID because a user can only ever have one drop on the screen at a time. That should be a, a unique enough ID, right? Yeah. Use CSS variables to position it. What? What do you mean? <laughs> um, okay, but for this left, I should do x minus the width divided by 2. Is that right? Um, here, I'm going to disable the animation. We're going to see how wide this thing is. Um, animation disabled. Oh. Oh. We should look at the width whenever it's tilted 10 degrees. Drop. Um, the width is 178. 178, 178. So they're all they're all ones 178. Um, we could technically get the elements width. I don't I think an element doesn't have width until you actually add it to the page. So we do that and then say um, minus element dot client width divided by two. I think that's what we need. Cool. So that's going to add it to the page. And then in update, we will update its um, x and y location. And in 
draw, we're going to set the top and left like we're doing here. Okay, so um, for each drop, we're going to say drop dot um, location location dot x plus equals drop dot velocity dot x, and we'll do the same thing with the y. That's not the actual width, is it? I think it is. The client width. Oh, because the fact that it's swaying, is that what you mean? Will the drop element not need an ID, or is the plan to remove the inner HTML for all at once? Um, I mean, we have the element itself. So like uh, in our collision detection, when it reaches the bottom of the page, we can just say document.remove child element. Like we can iterate over this array and see which ones are at the bottom. Yeah, I don't think they need an, an ID. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Yep, yep, we got an array. So uh, this is going to have all of the drops in it. And in update, we iterate all over all of them. So update should just take the location and um, increment it by the x and y velocity. And then draw is just going to do this, this little bit right here. Uh, drop stop for each. Drop. Um... I mean, really, we should put that in a function? Let's put it in a function. Uh, re, oh, what is that? No, refactor. Yeah, the client width may do that. I don't really know. Um, refactor to a function in the global scope. Um, update drop position and really we just need the, the drop itself because the drop has the element inside of it there so uh, here we can say drop dot element dot style dot top drop dot element dot style dot left drop dot element dot client with divided by two so um, really in the draw function we just need to call that for every um, every one. Um, actually, I did it the long way. <laughs> I should I should have uh, renamed this variable with f two. That that'll do it too, right? If I press f two here, and it it automatically <laughs> detects the references. Um, Alka taught me that one. Um, yep. Okay. So. I think this is our game. <laughs> At this point, um, dang it, I shouldn't have put all these inside of drops. Um, here, let's go back to when we had a bunch of URLs, because then we can just create a for loop and create a bunch of drops uh, given those URLs. Yeah. Here we go. So now, wait, oh no. Go further back. Back, way back. Cool. Something like this, and just as a test, we're gonna we're gonna drop a bunch, um, like right here. Um, comment that out for now. Let's grab the other ones. gonna be weird but we'll, we'll fix it um okay so that's that image this one's gonna be special because it's an avatar but we can do this um we will say this is all just in one big array. <laughs> uh, emotes. We'll move all that in there. Um, right now, I'm coding this to only support Twitch chat, uh, mainly because um, InstaFluff initially made it on Twitch. And yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna code this in a very general way where anybody could use it on Twitch. 
main and and the other main reason is because like this little chat app thingy that I built is dependent on my backend server, which combines YouTube and Twitch chats. And it, it makes things like totally weird. So I'm going to try to code it so that other people can use it. And then yes, I'll modify it so that YouTube will work with it as well. Cool. Um, so now that we have all these emotes, what's this complaining about? Oh, I got to comment this out. We will say uh, emotes dot for each um, do drop. Right, because do drop takes in a URL, creates the element, and then uh, makes it happen. All right, this this is it. Um, request animation frame. So we're just gonna call the game loop over and over again. Um, is this gonna work? And hello, J Felly Web, welcome. Does YouTube have a Nightbot equivalent? Yeah, they do. Um, I mean, I have Streamlabs bot on YouTube. It doesn't work very well, though. And I guess they do have Nightbot. I haven't tried it yet, though. Okay. Is this going to work? Place your bets now. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it. I'm going to go. Oh, well, I mean, we're missing the script tag. But once I add the script tag, is this going to work? What do you think? Santa Israel says yes. And hello, Santa Israel. <laughs> My bet is working. Give you a cool yes. Okay. That might be, uh, oh, hello, Spy Legion. Welcome. Carolinda says yes. <laughs> um, Hex says no. Should, but would. I don't know. Are we ready? Oh, something broke. <laughs> uh, is it still running? Oh, did I? No. Yeah, so that's good. App is there. Um... We called the game loop, which will call itself over and over again. Okay. Did I, did I, did I, did the game freeze? Oh, <laughs> something's happening, but they're not position uh, absolute. <laughs> it's updating their positions though. <laughs> uh, and thanks for the follow Spy Legion. Yeah, so technically it didn't work. Yeah, Dragomir, um, heck, Jack Skelly, you are all correct. Yeah, I need position fix. There we go. <laughs> but then it's gonna work. It's absolutely gonna work. Um, drop. Position fixed. We need collision detection, but look at that. Okay, we, we need to speed him up a little bit though. So, um, The velocity, let's multiply the velocity times five. <laughs> oh, is that too fast? <laughs> oh, 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 I have a, a syntax error. Multiply times five. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it was the CSS. So now, um, now we need collision detection. So when it hits the side, it reverses the X velocity and then it'll just, it'll just keep on going. Yay! Now watch them, yeah, they just all go off the screen. <laughs> Okay, so now we need collision detection. Um, that's going to happen in the update. Um, and actually, let's do this too, so we'll see the little emote. Let's say um, do drop with that and true, because it is an avatar. So we should see one little coding garden emote. There he is, and he's got the border radius. <laughs> cool. Okay. Oh, that one's uh, that might get on the target. <laughs> That's awesome, Josh. But yeah, so when it hits the bottom, set both velocities to zero and it will stop moving. And Bob's paradox is your uncle. <laughs> uh, did I re-enable the sway? Oh, nope, you're right. Let me enable that. That's going to look so cool. Watch it. Look at that. We got ourselves a game. <laughs> I'll do that. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um... I emo, my emote got the closest, very good. Okay, so now uh, we need some collision detection. So in our update function, um, swap proportionate to velocity. Okay, but in our update function, um, we'll update the location and then we can do our collision detection. So let's check and see if it's at the right edge. So if 
uh, drop dot location dot x plus drop dot element dot client width divided by two. Let's put that in a variable because that's that's a mouthful. Element width. So if we take its x location. Um, X location plus the width divided, no, plus the full width. Sorry, not divided by two, plus the full width. Because the X position, oh wait, no. Because we put it, oh, this is confusing. So the X in state or like in our object is technically the left edge. Because when we update the left, so let's think about it as the left edge. So that would be the full width. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, I mean, it'll be easy enough to change. So if the X location plus the element width um, is greater than or equal to window dot uh, inner width, then we'll reverse the X velocity. So that's if it hits the right edge. Then we'll say uh, drop dot velocity dot X equals a negative, oh, times equals negative one. So that should flip it. Well, they're all going to the yeah. That one, that one bounced, and that one, that bucket should bounce. <laughs> that was so horrible. Okay, we should see these bounce. Okay, and so um, we don't. We actually don't want to. Well, we want to say width divided by two because it, it bounced way too early. Look at that. Yeah, beautiful. So now we just also do the left edge. So or uh, drop dot location dot x is less than or equal to zero. Because if it's less than or equal to zero, it's going to hit the left edge. Yep. So it should be z uh, plus the width. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> uh, minus the width. Uh, and, and it is uh, width divided by two. I'm calling it element width. Let's call this uh, half width. Alka was going to hit the bullseye. Look at Alka. Look at him go. <laughs> um, Alka's saying, what I don't like about multiplying by negative one is that it can get stuck on the edge. Um, This y velocity is so slow. Why is that y velocity so slow? Okay, so how can I how can I fix that then, Alka? Instead of just flipping it, I mean, should we multiply these by ten? Just add the x velocity to x again after flipping. Math.random is from zero to one. Right, so that that did, I think that's a, that's a better y velocity. Cause like, um, oh, I see, I see. That's, that's a great call. So we should always just like add one or like what's the minimum value we want? Five and then multiply it by five. Yeah, and that's a little too fast. So now our minimum value could be like two. There we go. Thank you, Jitter Ted. Yeah, set a minimum velocity for y. So that'll do it. So basically, y will always be at least two, and then we add some random value to it. Um, it's mul instead of multiplying heavily for velocity, just plus it to make it min. The IQ of this chat is 9,000. Yeah, they're, they're basically building this game. <laughs> uh, Alka says, I prefer checking if it's out of the left edge, and then set the x to be the absolute value of the velocity on the right. So, okay. So checking if it's out of the left, left edge. So if we could say less than zero, and then we'll say um, drop dot velocity dot x equals. Oh, you're saying two different checks, because that will that will prevent it. Um, I see. So I see, and so these are two totally separate checks. Um, okay. 
So, um, else if that. So, if the x plus half width is greater than or equal to the inner width, that means it hits the right edge, then that means the x velocity was positive because it was going in this direction. Which means that's where we can say um, it equals uh, math dot absolute value of that. And then otherwise, we do the reverse, a negative math dot absolute value of x. Is this, this is what you're saying, Alka? If you move on x after flipping, it will undo the x move and it can't be stuck on the wall. Oh, I see. So actually, um, change the x location after, after the collision detection? That seems right. Okay. Try again. <laughs> I broke it. Um, did any of them go to the right edge? Yeah, they just keep on going. So if x math dot absolute value oh oh no 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 i got this i got this flipped this needs to be negative and this needs to be positive there we go yeah that's the winner okay so that's fantastic now all we need to do is check and see if it hits the bottom of the page and if it does we basically we could remove it from the array we could set the velocity to zero um so right here we can say if uh, drop dot location dot y plus drop dot element dot client height because the the y is going to be at the top of the element the height would be if it hits the bottom so if it's location y plus the client height um, is greater than or equal to uh, window dot client no uh, not client um, inner height I have a typo client height then we'll say uh, drop dot velocity dot y equals zero drop dot velocity dot x equals zero and uh, just to be sure we can set the x and y location to be like well the y location can stay the same but we'll just make sure that the y location is now exactly uh, this could put in a variable we're just gonna throw it there. Oh, <laughs> uh, minus. Uh, no, no. So it's gonna be the client height minus the um, the height, which we'll put it right at the bottom. Why are they disappearing? <laughs> um. Oh, because, well, no, then it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't actually, they should just stop. They should just stop. Uh, can I make a score property on each drop and the only update the drop if the score is null? Yeah, yeah. They seem a tad fast. Let's slow them down. <laughs> we can slow down the Y velocity like that. I gotta fix this though. Why is that happening? So if drop.location.y plus drop.element.client height, so that's if the bottom of the drop is greater than or equal to the height of the window, set the velocity to zero. Oh. And um, I mean, we could add a property that says like, done or landed or something like that drop dot landed equals true and we can say up here um, if drop dot landed return we can do a similar thing in uh, update drop position <laughs> now we have to just stop the swing um, let's see. Uh, AD says, I'm embarrassed to admit a lot of this is over my head, but it's fun watching everyone come together. Eh. I mean, and the thing is, the, the code is fairly simple. So, um, 
there, there's, there aren't many moving parts. So after a while of looking at it, you might, you might be able to grok it. Um, let's see. Carolyn just says, I'm in the same boat. I'm here to have fun and learn so much from these guys in the samurai host. Samurai. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think I fixed that. So I want, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, window.inner height minus drop element dot client height. Didn't I do that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're totally right. What, did, what was I doing there? So the Y should be window.inner height. Why did, how did that even work? Y equals window dot inner height minus drop. <laughs> Client height, right? That's what I want. That's so weird. Yeah, that's what I want. I don't know why that even worked, but that's, that's what I want. Yeah. It's like watching a wizard. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to push this to GitHub, and I'm also going to um, try and deploy it so that anyone can use it on their stream. Well, you'll be able to, like, pass in a URL that says, like, channel name equals coding garden, um, something like that. And then anybody can just take that URL, put it in their OBS, and they'll get they'll get the drop game. Um, cool. Thank you for all the help here, because that was, that was just weird. <laughs> Alka, sea legs from all this way. Okay, so... Uh, what we can do is let's add a landed class. So let's say like um, dot drop dot landed, and we'll say animation none, and uh, transform is uh, rotate uh, zero degrees like that, uh, and then we'll add the landed class to the element whenever it hits the bottom. Everybody say Colorado. Uh, yeah, and we're going to remove the shoot. We can even use like a, a, a scaling animation so it looks like it just shoot. So we'll say uh, drop.element.classList.add landed. And so that should stop the animation when it hits the bottom. Yep. Very good. And then we can say, I'm a giraffe. <laughs> Who's a giraffe? Yeah, we're going to remove the parachute. <laughs> um, so we can say um, drop dot landed shoot. And um, we'll, we'll create a, a shrink animation. So we'll say animation um, shrink one second ease in out. And um, we'll say transform scale zero and then we'll create our shrink animation which goes from a transform scale of one to transform scale of zero thank you so much andrew davis andrew davis with the five dollar patreon pledge thank you thank you thank you thank you appreciate you um and we'll call this uh shrink I'm going to try to do the server part. Um, can someone do uptime? How long have I been streaming? I, I think it's been over an hour. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll save the stretch part uh, or for like the server part um, for potentially another stream. I can get it working just on the client, but I absolutely want to create a separate server so that way other people can use this thing. And then we're not exposing like Twitch OAuth tokens in a web page or anything like that. Yeah, I've been streaming for about an hour. Uh, is it going to run in rounds like the old one or just continuously? Um, the animation, you mean? Um, it should only happen once. The other one, we have uh, infinite, which means it'll keep happening over and over again. But if because we didn't put infinite, it should only happen once. So let's see. Oh, they're gone. Let's see what they do. Hey! <laughs> um, I believe we can do, like, transform origin. Uh, bottom. And that way it'll shrink into the into the thing. Look at that. That's way too many on the target though. <laughs> That's way too many on the target. I gotta I gotta increase the randomness. Um What is wrong what is wrong with Patreon? I've been trying since the last stream. I don't know. Um maybe check if see if you have like an ad blocker on or something like that. Amazing. 
Instafluff has got to see. I'm, I'm going to definitely share this with Instafluff. Um, yeah. That's too many. That's too many. On so here's the thing. It's going to be in 1080p. So when it's wider, let's see how many actually hit the target. I feel like like that's is that too many on the target? What the heck? <laughs> I got to increase the randomness. I got on the target, though. Uh, Alco wins. Uh, I think the trick is to make them have smaller Y velocities so they have a higher chance of going past it. Okay. Um, or smaller X velocities? Let's, let's decrease the X velocity. Oh. Increase the X velocity limit. I don't know. I'm just going to play around with these numbers. See what happens. Um, so they will be like skipping. So oh, wait, wait. Um, decreasing X, <laughs> X velocity is a... You're right. Actually, like the, the higher the X velocity goes, the faster they're going to go and back and forth. I like that. Look at that. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Alka, always on the target. That's right on the target. Uh, look at him. Look at him go. I don't know. I, I think I um, we can play around with the randomness later. And I'm, I'm open to pull. Wow. I'm open to pull requests too. So if, if, if people can come up with other ways of uh, creating the, or making it so that they don't land on the target as often. <laughs> um, decreasing Y or increase X, same same effect. Alka is cheating, he said he's not even trying. <laughs> Alka always wins. Um, okay, I think that's good enough. Cause I, I just actually, I wanna get this in the overlay so we can all play. Um, so now I just gotta hook it up to Twitch chat. Um, so for that, Okay, let me let me update my to do. So, uh, starts out at a random x, has a random x and y velocity. Oh, we have to do scoring. I totally forgot. We have to do scoring. That, that should be easy though. Um, we're doing collision detection. We're reversing it. Um, now we need to do um, score the drop if it lands within the target. I can make the target smaller. You're right. <laughs> Thank you, Eki. <laughs> I could do this all day. Alka says. Um, yeah, let's make the target smaller. Um, Position fixed. Can we do uh, width, 100 pixels. Height, auto. Oh, but now um, we have to change what the bottom is. That's too small. 200 pixels. Yeah, I think we'll do that. That's a good. That's a good target size. I mean, we could do like 250. Yeah, that's a good target size. And then um, do like. Negative 100. Yep, we'll do negative 90. Yes, this is this is much better. Though the pug <laughs> got right on the target. Um, I could scale the x instead of sizing it. A percentage of the screen width. I like that. So um, width. I mean, ideally 10%. And then can we do a, a negative percentage for the bottom? What just happened? Use vmin? Let's do that. I lost my VS code. Um, okay. 
scale the X instead of sizing it. Yeah, let's do that. The only thing is the, the bottom, that needs to be relative to the width itself. Oh, weird. Yeah, bottom is relative uh, relative to the height of the window, huh? Um, 10 vmin, and bottom is 1 vmin? That could work. So if we'd make this um, 20 vmin and negative 5 vmin, 30 vmin, that's about right, and negative 10 vmin, negative 12 vmin, yeah, well, we'll go 11. <laughs> I think that's it. That's the winner. Because uh, now, yeah, no matter the size of the window, it's all relative. <laughs> yeah, so now it's all relative, which is it's totally great. Um, I mean, one thing we could do is we could, we could size the drops relatively too, but I like them being that size. Okay. Um, see you later, ATD. Uh, and I think that was you with the Patreon. Thank you, if that was you, but have a great night, and I, I will enjoy my Popeyes if I can get some. Um, okay. We we need some scoring logic, and... Um, oh, that's not there anymore, though. I need to go up one directory. Um, I think Spacey shared some scoring logic earlier. Do we have it? This. Let's see. So uh, when it lands, we know exactly where the X location is, so we should be able to calculate a score. This is what Spacey said. <laughs> um, we take the absolute value of the inner width divided by two minus the X location. Huh. grab x this is going to be a drop dot location um, and then we need a parentheses Yeah, that, I mean, is that what this is doing? But th yeah, that's what I'm doing. So uh, that's, that's what I'm thinking. So we say window dot inner width divided by two, because that's going to be the dead center of the uh, the target, and then uh, subtract um, x, and then take math dot absolute value of that. And that will be distance from the center. So zero is the best possible score, right? And then we can invert it. So a zero becomes a 100 and a 100 becomes a zero. Um, let's, let's log both of these and see what we get. Oh, um. And really, well, here's the issue, though. Um, we only want to give them a score if they're actually on the target, right? Um, and because this is all, like, relative, let's throw this down here. And then fresh. Yeah, so like this, this zero is like a really good score. Let's see. That's why I tried to do the, the one minus at the start. Well, sometimes it's negative. <laughs> I'm 
Just record the scores, and if it's in a certain range, yeah. I'd have to figure out... Um, Yeah, because the width is dynamic. Oh, actually, no, we can we can actually we can ask it for the width. We can ask it for the width. Yeah. So um Yeah, the threshold. So the I'm gonna comment that out for now, but if we take uh math dot absolute value of that, that will give us the distance from the center. Right? And then uh, we can say if the distance from the center is greater than half of the width of the target. So if score is greater than <clears throat> or equal to, um, we need to get the target. Let's put it in a variable. Document.query selector of the element with the class target. So <clears throat> that's that. And we should be able to use JavaScript to get its actual width. <laughs> no worries, Spacey. It's, I'm, I, I appreciate it. Um, so if the score is greater than or equal to target dot client width divided by two, then it's a hit. And let's log the drop. Yeah, we'll log the whole drop and the score. One, two, three. Let's see how many hits we got. That's a lot. <laughs> um, I gotta double check my logic. Yeah, so that Alka hit and it counted it as a, a hit. Convert to TypeScript. <laughs> um, the target has a dynamic width, yeah, right, yes, but we should we should be able to do uh, target dot. Let's log it. I believe JavaScript will give us like the calculated width. Um, it's calculating from the left edge. Window dot inner width divided by two minus x, which is either here or here, and the absolute value of that. Invert within that threshold to get the score. Uh, one minus is inside two, oh, what, um, oh, 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 on this one? Okay, we're ignoring that one for now, though. Convert to TypeScript. <laughs> Should it be less than? Yep. If the score is less than or equal to, yep, yep, yep. So let's see. No score, one score, two score, three score, four score, five score, six score. <laughs> let's go full screen, try again. One. Very good, okay. And the calculated, calculated width is 293, cool. So that was a score of 25. Um, a perfect score would have been zero, but the maximum possible score would have been 293, right? Right? <laughs> Hello, salty man. I do like Node.js. No worries. <laughs> um, okay, so here's here's what we got. Math.absolutevalue of window.innerwidth divided by two minus x plus dropped element.clientwidth. And that's gonna give us the score, 293 divided by two. Hello, Daniel Garden, welcome. Um, is the X centered on the drop or is it the left side? The X is centered. I, mm, it's tricky. So I think it's the left side. When we draw, we draw it at with, uh, with divided, um, with minus two. Yeah. So we, th that X look, it's, it's in the, it's, it's the center of the drop. Yeah. Divide by half the width and you get a normalized score between zero and one. Cool. Um, so let's put this in a variable. So 
So if the score is less than or equal to target half width, um, we can say uh, score divided by the half width. And that's a number between 0 and 1. <laughs> Hello, Angel. <laughs> Love this stream. No, I'm not from Grand Theft Auto, but um, all right. I think I copied something from Josh. I don't know. I've been streaming too long. I need to stop. <laughs> And that's a 34. So we should probably do minus 100 because that, that would be like a 75, right? So I could do um, times 100 to get a number above 100 and subtract that from 100 to flip it. Does that make sense? Let's, let's see a few more scores. Yeah, because uh, this... This Alka got the zero point two, so this would have been a, like this would have been a score of ninety eight, and this would have been a score of like eighty six. I think that makes sense. I think we're on the right track. Yeah, do one one minus the score. Okay. Uh, divided by half the width. Um. Final score equals one minus that, and then that whole thing times 100. Because the best possible score would have been a zero. So if we say zero divided by half width, that's gonna be zero, and then one times 100 is 100. So this, this is it, this is it. I think I figured it out. <laughs> this is the final score. Actually, let's do this. Twenty five. Forty six. Forty six. Let's try again. That might have been the first time when none of them landed on the target. We'll, we'll, we'll increase their odds. We'll do this. Seventeen. Forty three. And a 71. I think this is it. I think we've done it. I think we've done it. Uh, 0 0.92 minus the score plus math.floor. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But thank you for the suggestion. I think I've done it. Can, can we get some, some, uh, some, su some, no some subtle nods if people think that this is, this is okay? Uh, we can do this too. Um, let's just create a section for high scores. Um, and, oh yeah, 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 beautiful, beautiful, great, 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 um, great thought. So what we can do is just, we could actually, we could actually do it with all of them. So whenever we create a drop, we'll set the Y, uh, the X velocity to zero and we'll set the inix, initial X position as window dot, uh, inner width divided by two. And everyone should get a perfect score. Oh, well. Here we go. Everyone's going to get a perfect score. <laughs> 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Yes. I, I, th I think that's a good test. Ooh, I like that, Danny. Uh, I'll add it as a stretch, but that, that's awesome. Like, your, your number, like, pops up above your head. I love that. Oh, they're all winners. You're all winners. Participation trophies for everyone. Okay, so uh, let's get a little high score board. We'll hook up Twitch chat, which is going to be simple, <laughs> and then uh, and then we're done. Okay, so let's create a little div. Um, class equals leaderboard. Um, and yeah, we'll just add like p tags with the people's names. Um, let's do this. We'll say the leaderboard is position fixed, top of 10 pixels, left of 10 pixels, and uh, background of um, RGBA 
with just a little bit of transparency, like 0.5, like that. Um, and we'll give it a height of, no, we'll give it a width. Actually, it could be dynamic. Let's just throw some initial scores in there. We'll say uh, color is white, font weight bold, font family sans serif. And so inside of there, we'll throw a little header, so like an H4 uh, leaderboard. And then each score, I think, is just going to be a P tag. That's like Alka. Oh no, we'll, we'll have the score and then the person's name. Daniel Garden, 98. <laughs> Salty Man. Salty Man. Salty Man. You get a 75. All right, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, not bad. We'll add some padding. One rim. Right? It's perfect. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely perfect. Um, and then we'll just add the scores as we go. That's too much padding, though. We'll use half half a rim. Wait. Oh. Um, that that H four has some default padding. And mar or margin. Did I use an H four? Yeah. And we'll do this as point seven five. Beautiful. <laughs> Am I still going to make them seeds? I think I will. So the idea is this one is very general. Anybody can use it as an overlay, but I'm going to then take that, customize it so it works with my integrated Twitch and YouTube feed, and we can make it garden themed. So there, there'll be seeds, and then when they drop here, the score will be how high the, the seedling grows. But yeah. <laughs> Only displayed leaderboard if someone makes it onto it. Yep, I agree. And then later on, we'll add like a timeout and stuff like that. But um, by default, we'll just say this is display none. And then um, when someone makes it onto the board, we will say um, let's put it in a variable leaderboard document dot query selector element with class leaderboard and um, if someone scores we'll say leaderboard dot style dot display equals initial I don't know what do I do there initial yeah <laughs> very cool Block. That's a yes. Thank you. That's, that's way better. <laughs> so we go from display none to to display block. Hello, Francisco. You're late, but you're all, you're here in time to maybe play the game. Okay. So, um, like always, I didn't get everything done that I wanted to. So what we'll do for now is I'm just gonna get the TMIJS integrated in the client. The, the the thing that I don't like about that is um, you have to put your Twitch token for the bot to be able to send a message. Um, in the channel though technically I could just do anonymous auth I'm just gonna do anonymous auth and then all this extra stuff for like creating a server that hides the token and all that stuff That's that's for another time But right now we're just gonna do anonymous auth and then you'll you'll see the leaderboard on the overlay itself So that should be totally fine um, Cool Let's get TMI JS going so TMI JS.com. This is the example I need. Oh, what happened? Oh, I was, I was like what happened to the syntax highlighting? Yeah, but this is what I need. Um, I'm not going to be requiring TMI though. I'll just get the, I'll, I'll pull it down from the, the CDN. So, um, yeah, basically the, the game is waiting. Down here, we'll um, talk to TMI. We want to listen in the Coding Garden channel. And um, when we get a message, We'll say if message dot starts with drop, then we'll log that message. Um, don't need that. Don't need any of that. 
Uh, Sigurd is saying, it would be cool to include some player agency to the game, have users specify shoot delay and milliseconds in the drop command, which will alter the velocity. I love it. Like, these are all fantastic ideas. Because um, right now, it's totally based on chance. And uh, there was a suggestion um, in the last stream I did where people were mentioning, like, what if you did drop and you did, like, little arrows, and that means you'll have velocity to the right or something like that. But, yeah. Uh, how do I know who the message comes from? Um, it's in... I believe it's in the... I believe it's in the message object. Yeah. Um, oh, no, it's in tags. Sorry, it's in tags. Tags.username. Cool. Uh, now I need TMI. I'm just going to get that from uh, from GitHub. Uh, TMI.js. TMI.js. Releases. TMI.min.js. Actually, is this supported in the browser? We'll see. Uh, coding garden, the drop game, client. Save it. And here, we'll bring it in. Um, TMI.min.js. And in the app, yeah, we're not doing any debugging. Cool. Let's see if we broke anything. Hey, look, there's Denny Fritz. <laughs> uh, can some can people do some drop commands, and we'll see if they show up here. Um. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> hey, come on, Mirchan. Cool. So that's that's working. Um. We potentially. No, actually, yeah. So this is great. Let me let me log all of the tags because tags is um, has the emotes in there as well. So um, we'll be able to just get the um, um, yeah. Somebody somebody send something with emotes too. Drop the mic. <laughs> but yeah, this gives us emotes, which is empty. But if someone does a drop, so bang drop with um, here we go. So in the object, we have emotes, um, and that is the ID of the emote. So we can just throw that into the URL that we have, I believe. 245, that's a really low ID. And it's that one. <laughs> so that's that should be all we have to do. Um, so yeah, in here, we'll say uh, if uh, tags.emotes. Yeah, pick a random key. So if tag.emotes is a thing, then we'll say uh, emote equals uh, object.keys of tags.emotes. Well, let's put it in, a, in an array. Emotes equals that. And then the emote we want will be emotes at math.random times emotes.link. And then uh, the emote URL is going to be that thing with the uh, emote right there. Uh, Math.floor, thank you. So math.floor of that thing. Cool. Um, so that should be good. Let's uh, we're logging all kinds of weird stuff. Where are my other console.logs? We have calculated width. Yeah, we don't want that anymore. Um Okay, so we found the emote if they sent an emote. Um, we'll say else if, and really we need to do some parsing um, parsing of the message. So um, message equal, let's say like potentially you could send an image URL and I can use that as the image for the, for the drop. Um, so I can say URL equals message dot split on drop 
Um, um, just a second. Well, actually, I could use my fancy stream puppy thing. Do 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 do. <clears throat> um, cool. So yes, I'm on a VPN because yeah, someone could send an image and um, they could get my IP address. But basically, I'll say uh, split it on drop. Grab the first thing. Well, what's the best way to do this? Actually, we'll split it on spaces. Split it on spaces and then grab the first one and trim it. Um, if there is one, what if there isn't one? Ah, message.slice. Let's do this. Uh, args equals message.split that dot uh, shift. Because shift will, will um, well, args equals that and then we'll say args dot shift because the first thing in the message would have been the drop command and then we'll say um, if args dot length then args at zero dot trim else nothing <laughs> um, and then we potentially have to get their um, avatar URL I don't think we'll do that right now but otherwise, log possibly that they sent us a URL. Cool. And we'll log the tags.username and the emote URL. Okay. Send drop messages. <laughs> uh, Eggy says, letting Twitch chat put any image on your stream might be a bad idea. I've done it before. We have some pretty wholesome peoples here. Um, we haven't had any incidents, but um, you're right. It could lead to very bad things. <laughs> so yeah, this is good. So we're getting the emotes if they sent them, but someone tries sending uh, like exclamation mark drop and then something. It could be like ASDF. Also, like, put in an image URL. Let me make, I'm going to make sure that I'm actually getting it. Um, yeah, something. Oh, did Danny do a drop drop? <laughs> um, come on, Francisco. <laughs> cool. So basically, I'm just going to do, um, if... If, they, if there is a second parameter and it does begin with HTTPS, we're going to use it. Otherwise, uh, we'll use some default image for now, but in the future, we'll grab the avatar URL. Versus this. That's me. Oh, should we, should we use the CJ URL? No worries, Francisco. <laughs> cool. So um, at this point, we can do, we can do the drop. And um, we'll include their username whenever they do the drop. So we'll say uh, do drop, and we'll pass in um, emote URL. Actually, let's pass in an object. So we'll say um, we just want this to be called URL because I think that's how we're calling it in the function. URL and username is tags.username, like so. And up here in the do drop, um, this will be an object that also takes in the username. And that way we can, uh, well, that will be the ID as well. And that way we can show their username in the leaderboard if they score. Cool. So this should work for emotes now. Um, I think the... Should work. Oh yeah, it actually doesn't matter because it's block scoped, but you're absolutely right. 
Um, we can just pass it in. I'll do this. Yeah, if I was using a more strict, uh, a stricter linter, it would have said like uh, you shouldn't shadow those variables. But yeah, technically that would have worked. Oop. Cool. Um, and then now, if they score, we need to add their name to the leaderboard. So we'll say uh, leaderboard dot append child high score. Oh, but we need we. We're not going to do that. <laughs> We're going to keep track of all the high scores because we want to always sort them by highest possible score. Oh, and then don't let them drop if the username is already in the drops array. That's a great call too. Um, so we could also say like uh, current users and that way we can just index into that thing. So when we do the drop, we'll say current users at username equals true. And... Um, in here, we'll say um, if current users at username return. Um, and really, let's just destructure the emotes and the username from that, because because. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. That um, if they're already in there, leave. When we do drop, we set it to true, so that way they can't drop again. Cool. Um, and then now we want our high scores. It's going to be an array. And then if someone scores, we're going to push into that array. Array. So we'll say high scores dot push. An object with the username and the score, which is the final score. Um, username is drop dot username, and then we're gonna sort the high scores by highest score always. So high scores dot sort. We get A and B. We want to return A dot score minus B dot score, and then um, we will say uh, render high, uh, render leaderboard. And now render leaderboard is just going to empty itself out and add all of the scores. So we'll have a function, um, render leaderboard. And here's what we'll do. We'll give them a little section to put it all in. So let's create a div right here and say, call it scores. Um, Um, so we'll say uh, leaderboard. Um, I think Twitch trims the extra space. What did Angel uh, say? If you want to add args to the command later. Okay. Cool. Um, leaderboard dot query selector for uh, scores. We'll say scores dot inner HTML equals, um, and then. I have a high scores array. Yeah, high scores dot reduce. We're going to re reduce that down to some HTML. We get each, um, well, we, we'll destructure it. We have the score and the username. Um, we're going to start off our HTML as an empty string. We're going to return the HTML plus a P tag with the user's score and the user's name. Username. Let's put a dash in there. Uh, Francisco is asking, have I tried pug.js to replace HTML? Um, I've used pug on the server side, but never like on the client side with pug.js pug or anything like that. This should create a bunch of p tags. And did we, do I want to only list the top five or so? Sure, yeah. So we'll say um, push and then high scores equals high scores dot slice from zero to five. Um, high scores is a const, we'll make it a let. And are we ever showing the leaderboard? Oh yeah, we are. We, we show the leaderboard when a high score happens. Uh, do it after sorting, you're absolutely right. Thank you. 
Okay, I think this is it. I think this is the winner. <laughs> We're gonna go back to um, totally random. Oh, <laughs> I still have all. I still have all of those. Um, all of those random ones. We can get rid of these now. Yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, and cannot read proper any inner HTML of undefined. Oh, query selector dot scores. All right, here we go. Someone try a drop command. Cannot access emotes before initialization. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, um, let's say emote IDs. Try again. <laughs> oh, something tried to happen. Oh. So it'll, it'll, it'll only work with emotes right now. There we go, undefined with the 73 score. <laughs> uh. So you, you have to use an emote. There we go, undefined with the 51. Okay, I have it sorted in the wrong order. Okay, so username isn't showing up on the leaderboard and the sort is in the wrong order. So when I filter it, or when I uh, I'll do b.score minus a.score, and um, does drop have a username? So when we say do drop in the message, we are passing in username. Let's actually log it when it happens. Well, we'll log when the do drop command gets called. And let me uh, get rid of all this. So do drop. Let's log the username and the URL. Um, and then in here, we should say drop dot username. So that's good. Um, and we're pushing in an object that has a username and a score. Okay. Oh, uh, the other thing I wanted to do was uh, set the score to be uh, two decimal places. Okay, try again. Yeah, it's undefined. I gotta fix that. Why is that happening? So I guess we'll debug it. Um, <laughs> so when we call do drop, that d the username does exist. That's good. Oh, because it's ID. <laughs> So username is actually drop.id. Kind of don't like that. Let's fix that. Let's just make this username. Uh, where are we? Drop.username. All right, this is it. This is the winner. And then I'll put it on the overlay. And it only took me two hours. <laughs> that is a good one. Is that Danny with the puppy? Uh, yeah, 1.82. <laughs> Um, and just real quick, one thing I'll add is um, after 90 seconds, I'm going to remove a user from from the array so that they can drop again. And that way it's like, kind of like a never-ending thing. Um, so this right here happens when... Um, when they hit the bottom of the screen. So right here, I could do a set timeout and we'll do, uh, right now we'll do, let's do 10 seconds. 
we'll say in 10 seconds, we want um, drops to equal drops.filter or D. D does not equal the drop. So we're gonna remove that drop from the array. Actually, I mean, we could always, let's always do that. Um, Cause that way uh, it won't try to update anymore. Like it won't, it won't, left. <laughs> it, it won't need to uh, iterate over it whenever it, um, 100 seconds. Danny says, this is sweet, thank you, Danny. Uh, and I missed a bunch of chats because I've been I've been typing. But I gotta go get a chicken sandwich. They're gonna be sold out. They're gonna be sold out. <laughs> okay, but um, so when someone hits the bottom of the screen, we just straight up remove them from the array. Um, because then we're not iterating over them in the draw or the update. So that's totally fine. Um, but what we'll do is in um let's say in five first I'm gonna do some testing. So in five seconds. We'll say, um, what was what did I call that thingy? Current users. At uh, drop dot username equals false. So that way they can do it again. And then I'll also say a document dot body dot remove child. Drop dot element. And so that should remove them from the page. Set it to false in the object so that you can drop again. All right. So basically, after, at, once it hits the bottom after five seconds, we'll we should see the thing disappear, and then that person can go again. One, two, three, four. It's gone. So the person that sent that one should try to send one again. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna set a longer timeout. Um, we're going to do uh, let's do ninety seconds. And another thing we can do is we can just like slowly fade fade out the drop. So let's say drop dot element dot classless dot add. Um, do we? Oh, we already added a landed class. So let's do this. Uh, the landed class will slowly fade out over over ninety seconds. So drop dot landed um, animation fade out ninety seconds um, opacity is zero, <laughs> and then we'll add a fade out animation. So it should go from an opacity of one to an opacity of zero. We'll call this fade out. Um, and let's just test it. Let's not do 90 seconds. Let's do uh, five seconds. And then we'll update our timeout to also be five seconds. OK, try again. Um, now, when they hit the bottom, they should slowly fade out over five seconds. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's so cool. Dragomir with the 69. Whoa, Josh with the 73. Okay, so yeah, that's perfect. I think I think we're done. We gotta ship it. Um, so. That should be removed after 90 seconds, and then we'll up this to a 90 second fade out. I guess I could shrink them too. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> uh, fade out will go from a scale of one to a scale of, well, that's not how that works. <laughs> uh, transform, oh wait, I can just, can I, can I do two animations? I don't know, I'm just gonna do this for now. Like, can I put two animation names on an on an element name? Thank you, Josh. Yeah, it it took two hours. I, that's way longer than I wanted it to, but um, cool. So now it's set to ninety seconds, I believe. 
<laughs> Chad says, I'm pretty bad at this for a game of chance. Um, yeah, so it's set to 90 seconds. So now they should shrink and fade out over 90 seconds. Dang, you, you can't... You can't you're not you're not getting the luck, Danny, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> well, ninety seconds is a long time to wait. Are they getting smaller? Yeah, they're getting smaller. <laughs> we should set the transform origin to bottom though. Uh for this one too. Okay. Um so at this point, I just need my local IP address and then I can put it as an overlay. And when we're good. We're good. <laughs> Hostname dash L, thank you. Well, I don't know if I have hostname resolution on my network though. Uh, dash I. Thanks for the follow, Ebo. Ebo. Um, my IP actually changed. That's interesting. Thanks for the follow, Hurleys. Welcome to the stream. Um, wait, where were we? Oh yeah, and I created a, a bot account. I'm gonna, I'm called it um, High Scorekeeper. So I can make more games like this and um, they all use the same bot and they all use like the same leaderboard engine. Um, so that'll be cool. <laughs> everyone's, everyone's still dropping, you can't even see it. Cool, so that works. All right, I'm gonna add it as an overlay now and uh, it will be ready. So um, let's do this, add browser, drop game. Well, that's not good. Oh, that's not good either. Oh, I need to change the background color. <laughs> Oh, it automatically detected the background color. Cool, so should be able to do it now. Oh, they're so tiny. <laughs> oh, um, Chad with a C, you have to be a subscriber to Alka's uh, Twitch channel to be able to use his emote. Oh, I don't have it on here, sorry. <laughs> Let me copy it. I might need to um, increase the velocity because I think my, I feel like it's 1080p though. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it, it's, the leaderboard's really hard for me to see. I need to up, I'm going to up that font. Um, leaderboard, font size, two rims. Oh, it reset. So that's the other thing. I could put, you could potentially have, like, hold the game state in server-side logic. So if the page ever refreshes, the stuff doesn't go away. And that's a good point. Um, yeah, let's just do, like, two rims of padding. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Dragomir with the 24. Hello, Bitmonkey. Welcome to the stream. You made it just in time. We just finished my drop overlay game. Um, right now, it only works with Twitch emotes. So if you do exclamation mark drop and then choose an emote, you will see that emote drop. And if you land on the target, uh, you'll get some points. Yeah, so should I should I increase the veloc velocity? Carry Linda on the sweet spot? Yeah. Do I use coin wallets? Um, not often. I have one, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't I don't trade Bitcoin often. I could probably make this an extension so it doesn't flood the chat every ninety seconds. Well, at the same time, your Twitch metrics are better if the the chat is more active. Chad with the C with the 43. Great job, Chad with the C. 
Uh, set animation to delay 30 seconds and make it not as long. Oh yeah, and username on top of the emote. That's a great point. Cool. All right, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna do those two things. We're gonna. Um, it's more painful this this way. So we're gonna increase the velocity slightly. Um, so let's say y velocity here. Y velocity, right? Let's go to five. Should reset. Um. I've never created uh, decentralized apps. Sorry, Bitmonkey. That's a that's that feels a little bit better. That right there. Um, you you have to use an emote, uh, Valentine. Um, you can't just do drop. I I, I need to code that. <laughs> but the idea is, if you do drop without an emote, I'm gonna contact the API to get your uh, image URL, your user image URL, and that's what we'll drop instead. Um, but we do need to add the user's name. Um, shoot. Let's add, I guess, an H4. Need to pass the user the URL and the username in here. And then um give the username a class. Um text align center color is white, font weight is bold. All right, let's see what we got. And because I did all the math dynamically, this should still work. <laughs> like it's all based on the, the um, height and width of the element. Did, oh, did Josh just get a zero velocity? I don't know. I do not know. Um. The, the chat overlay, the, the chat extension I have installed is, um, I didn't create it, but I just installed the extension. I didn't add it in the args. I think it did. Nothing happened. Okay. <laughs> it's probably broken. Uh, we can look at it in Chrome. DevTools. Username is not defined. I thought I passed it in. So uh, we get the username. Oh, I didn't. I didn't put it here. Good call. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're, when you're right, you're right, Francisco. When you're right, you're right. <laughs> All right, should work now. There we go. Hey, there's a little name on top. <laughs> That's awesome. Danny, you're gonna do it, Danny. You're gonna do it. Oh, 70, uh, 67. There we go, Chad with the 37. <laughs> that emote is so funny, Elka. Uh, Francisco with 38. Very good. Very good. <laughs> For, that should be a prize, too, furthest away. Oh. Um. <laughs> the name is, is, is still above the shoot. I think we can fix that. Um, we can say drop dot landed to shoot. Shrink one second, ease in out. So in the shrink, 100% we can set uh, visibility to hidden. No, um, display none. And then it should drop the name down. Do I have access to the account display name? Yeah, I do actually. Um, Alka, do you know the property name offhand? It's not username. Um, is it display name? Okay. Oh, can you destructure? I've never... 
Is that possible? <laughs> Can you do that? Um, let's, let's do this. Const name equals username or display name. Display, oh, you're right, 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 exactly. That's because that's what we wanted to do. Is, does destructuring work like this? I've never done this before, where you're destructuring a property that um, you need to put in quotes. Quotes works, cool. I think that's it. So um, if they have a display name, we'll use that. Otherwise, use their username. And then we're passing in the name. Using it there, it should work. Somebody try. Yep, cool. Thank you, Francisco. Oh, whose emote is that? Oh, the. <laughs> the name is still like really high above the 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 user though. Oh, you know what? I, so the hundred percent says display none. Here we'll say display block, but we'll default to display none on um. I think drop landed shoot display none. Please the names in Comic Sans. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, does anyone know a really quick way to add a border around some text? Animate the display property? I don't know. I don't want to, I guess I don't want to animate it. Can someone give me something I can just copy and paste that will work? <laughs> I've never seen an easy way to do text uh, text shadow. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, so that that kind of worked. but but now, because I hid the um, um you know what? I gotta, get, I gotta get rid of that. That's that's ugly. I'll, I'll work on this bug later. And did I lose the sans serif font? That's definitely not the effect we wanted. <laughs> um, did I lose sans serif, or was it never sans serif? Oh, we only did sans serif on the leaderboard. All right, Chad, this is the one. Not quite. Okay, Murdoch, you're actually really close. Okay, I'll try that, Carolinda. I'm going to refresh. <laughs> Did that work? Uh, when you hit the target, you get on the leaderboard. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> and hello, Valentine. Yeah, so I'm going to push this code to GitHub. You are more than welcome to make pull requests, fix the styling. Like right now, the name is like it needs to be centered way more. Um, oh, actually, yeah, we, we kind of, we kind of need to do this, like make the, um, uh, the drop shoot have a, um, oh, no, cause we gave a, we gave a fixed width to the drop. The drop has a fixed width of 150 pixels. So yeah, great job on the 45, Danny. Oh, you just, just you just missed it, Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Hello, Majestic Guy. Majestic Guy says, a funny thing happened today. Uh, yeah, so Majestic Guy tried to Rick mo Rick roll me the other day, unsuccessfully. Um, but they went into CVS, walked in, and guess what started playing? Never gonna give you up. <laughs> so you got you got Rick rolled. That was me from afar. Um, change it to a bigger pixels. I'm gonna try what Andrew sent. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna try what, what Alka sent because it's so much more. <laughs> uh, this. All right. And uh, Majestic Eye, I made my own drop game. Did that do it? Hey, let's let's make like a white background. Yeah, I think that did it. That's the winner. We got we look at all the drops. That's so cool. <laughs> See you later, Francisco. Thanks for hanging out with us, Danny Fritz. Oh, Josh with the eighty-eight, Danny with the seventy-six. Cool. This is a good one, Chad. No X velocity. <laughs> 30. Yeah, so yeah, and so I'm open to pull requests. Oh, that's a good one. A 94. I think that's the highest we've seen so far, Valentine. Great job. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, so like okay, like Daniel Garden has a little bit of X velocity, but we're getting a lot of them that have no X velocity. That's pretty interesting. I don't think we set a minimum, so it's sometimes it's zero. Uh, no, so the the plan is to, so I'm making this, which is very generic and like any Twitch streamer could use it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get that working. We're going to fix the styles and everything. And then once I have that working, I'm going to make my own custom version where uh, you drop a seed and when you land on the target, it grows a plant. The closer you are to the bullseye, the taller the plant is. Josh is saying, I'm almost positive I got an absolute zero earlier, meaning the thing didn't drop at all. Is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Oh, I don't know, Alka. <laughs> I, I can't see the full, like I have the uh, O for the X velocity. That's actually, that's okay. Cause that means it just like sways down like this. Um, Asapri, um, right now it's all inside of the game. Yeah, it might not have been long enough, yep. I could do interesting things too, like when the timeout is up, I could send a whisper to the user that says, hey, you can drop again. All right, I gotta go. I gotta go get a Popeye's chicken sandwich. Hopefully they still have them. <gasps> Hell on Earth with the 99! Yes, yes, great job, Hell on Earth. So good, 99.32. Very good. Yeah, crowd goes wild. The highest possible score is 100. There's Alka. <laughs> yep, so I'll actually, yeah, I'll push it up right now before I, before I leave. <laughs> What's funny is uh, it's running in both places. <laughs> um, that's so interesting. Oh, never mind. I thought, I thought it was the exact same. I was like, it's supposed to be random. But yeah, over on this side, uh, Zero Turner got a 74, Murdoch a 31, <laughs> a 29. But um, that's just because it's browser-based, so they're happening in both places. Um, yeah, let's make a repo. Yeah, we need somebody to get 100. Uh, let's call it drop game. Yeah, I'm about to leave. Thank you, Carrie Linda. Um, I wanted this to be a quick stream. I said I was gonna be done after an hour, but I've been here for two hours. But yeah, so this was this is just a quick stream tonight. I'm gonna do code katas code katas on Wednesday, and then either Thursday or Friday we can work on this thing again and make it prettier. Make it prettier. Um, so there's that. We'll update the readme. Um, so really what we did was, um, 
Twitch chat on client with emote support. So that's done. The next thing we want to do on the client is, um, well, we could probably like reuse this logic, but basically what I want to do is take the Twitch client code out of the client, put it on the server so that way we can hide the OAuth token. And that way the bot user can send a message with high scores into the channel. But yeah. Uh, Zero Turner says, I hope you and chat have a wonderful night. Glad my brother brought me here. I got glued watching. Have a nice one. Thanks for tuning in, Zero Turner. Have a good night. Cool. Um, so, the but what we do need to do is um, allow drop with no emote, use um, get the user's avatar image from Twitch API. So if you do exclamation mark drop with no emote, it'll actually just use your image like this or this or this, and that what that's what we'll drop instead. Um, and then an another thing we could do is allow drop with custom image URL, and then um, you'll drop that image instead. And what I want to do in the future is make this completely and totally reusable. So I'll deploy it, host it on my own server, and then someone can go to the website say, add this game to my channel, that will generate like a unique secret URL that they can put in OBS for like a stream overlay. And I'll also have a, a high score server. So um, basically with that unique URL, those will be the high scores that are like reported into your chat. Oh, emojis. Yes, of course, of course, of course. Um, allow drop with emojis. Yeah, and the main thing with allowing um, emojis and uh, images are that people that are watching my stream on YouTube don't have emotes. So they could um, um, drop an emoji or an image. Cool. So that's it. Um, oh yeah. And then uh, someone had had the idea earlier, but also someone in the last stream. Um, allow modifiers to affect um, X slash Y velocity. That might look something like that, but we can we can chat on it in the future. So um, that's good there. Um, wait, how do I not have a DS store in my git ignore? Uh, Danny got the 76 <laughs> and, um, I like that we're only showing five scores in the leaderboard. Yeah. Another, another thing we can do is, um, after, I don't know, five minutes of inactivity, just hide the whole game. Um, so that way that leader, I mean, in, I definitely don't want to have this leaderboard, um, this on top of the screen while I'm like coding or something like that. So we'll have to figure out something for that. Cool. But it's on GitHub now. Think. Yep. There it is. Um. Oh, I didn't send a chat message this whole time. <laughs> and it is hard to tell when you can drop again. So one of the um, stretch goals might actually be the the bot, which is keeping track of the scores and sending those scores to the channel. Um, it could um, send you a whisper and say, "Hey, you, you're allowed to drop again." No worries, no worries, Andrew. Can I delete that message? Message. Cool. Whisper. Cool. All right. This was super fun. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, <laughs> Ninety-nine point three. Wait. I want to watch these drops happen. You might have dropped too early. There's Sigurd. Ooh, that. Uh, oh, it overshot it. That's a cool emote, though. Yeah, get your last drops in. <laughs> and then we're going to go raid a channel. Um, so, and so here's the other thing. So Carolinda landed on the target. 
but it wasn't high enough to show on the leaderboard, so we don't actually know what score she got. Um, so it'll be nice to have the bot, which will actually send the score in the chat so we can acknowledge it. Cool. Any last drops? Any other drops? I mean, you can keep dropping. <laughs> we need to find a channel to raid. Um... <laughs> Uh, Bauer GG, what is about to happen? Oh, 77.68. Great work. Great work. Um, it looks like Sika Player's live. Let's see what he's doing. He's learning React. Uh, 0.5 second cooldown for the end of the stream. Oh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's get drops like crazy. Um... I'm down. That's a great plan. Um, let's do it. So we're gonna say, um, we'll do we'll do one second, <laughs> one second, and then styles.css should uh, fade out over one second. All right, there you go. You have a one second cooldown. In the leaderboard reset. <laughs> nice job, Zero Turner, with the 44. Jack Skelly. Ooh, 80.77. Jack Skelly, very good job. Majestic Guy with the Bob Ross, 25. Uh, Alka with the 54. Jack Skelly's currently in the lead. That's a nice drop, Carolinda. Yep, there you go. You're on the leaderboard with 33. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, I'm I'm actually uh kind of happy that the Bullseye isn't happening as often as it was when I did a bunch of random ones in, uh, in the game itself. <laughs> I bet the Twitch chat looks insane. Uh, you have to do exclamation mark drop space and then, then the emote. Is anybody going to beat Jack Skelly? Nice one, Danny. Didn't make the leaderboard, though. Oh, Zero Turner made the board. 41. Oh, I didn't think about that. Can someone make the leaderboard twice? Should I allow that? Or do I only keep their highest score? Hmm. Yeah, because Alka's on there twice. Zero Turner was on there twice. Alka with the 80.24. What do you all think? Yeah, so Alka's on there twice. Keep only keep the highest score, so you can't you can't make it on there twice. I like that. That way you can see more people's names. Okay, we'll put it on the to do on the to do list. But all right, all right, we're gonna raid someone. Uh, we might raid Seeker Player. I watch him every now and then. He's learning. He's learning React. Um. So there is that. Um. So if you know React, you could help him out. Let's see who else is streaming though. More commands for controlling the leaderboard. Yep. Chad made it on the board. 77. Nice job, dude. Oh, boy. Oh, I thought that was going to be really close. Angel's on the board, too, with an 80. Oh. <laughs> Sigurd, this might be it. That looks like a really good trajectory. Uh, nope. Oh, Jack got a 93? Great job, dude. I think we sh I should kill the game right there. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see who's streaming, though. Did not oh, you don't like Boba? Sushi Someone? codes. These are still the same pictures? The Primigian. Who's actually writing some code? Nobody's <laughs> writing code on the live coders team. They're pseudo kid. Um, I think we'll raid Seek a player. To do? Cool, yeah. We're going to raid Seek a player. He's, uh, uh, he's learning React. So be nice, help him. Maybe you'll learn something while he's learning something. Um, thanks everyone for hanging out with me and playing this game. That was super fun. <laughs> um, and thanks for the follow, Zyphernot. React, ugh. <laughs> oh, this is it. Did you score Daniel Guard? No. 
cool. This is this is this is so cool. <laughs> thanks thanks for tuning in, Carolinda. Um, okay, so yeah, we're gonna raid. Not Roddy. <laughs> raid. So uh, stick around if you want to raid with us. Wait, that didn't work. It's so funny because like I can't see all the drop commands because I have them filtered out, but the chat looks insane. <laughs> there's so many. There's so many um, uh, things happening. Cool. Is anyone gonna take Chad from the leaderboard? Uh, drop drop still got registered. It shouldn't have. It it'll only it, right now. I only uh, do it if you have any emote in your message at all. It'll include like one of the one of the emotes. Did you get on the board, Andrew? Yeah, Andrew on the board with an eighty-one. Great job. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna end it there. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, please, well, actually, let, let's get the raid message. So the raid message is this. Stop dropping! Stop dropping so people can do the raid message. <laughs> there you go. So copy that raid message. We're gonna send that raid message when we go over and raid uh, Seek a Player. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. This was super fun. Uh, yeah, and we'll see you next time. Tune in Wednesday for Code Wars Code Katas. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Mm -hmm.